Hey, what's up everyone? And welcome back to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'm Jimbo and today's episode is brought to you by housecallpro.com. If you go to housecallpro.com slash ADP, you will see a, or get the opportunity for a free demo uh, to check out the, uh, what I think is one of the best CRMs for detailers at the moment. And they're sponsoring this episode. So thanks to them for that. Uh, anyway, this, I got a question in from a fellow listener last week. And they said, hey, have, Jimbo, have you ever gone through any slow times uh, in your detailing business? And if you have, what are some tips and tricks that you can do to kind of either get new clients, deal with your existing clients, just basically get money in the door? What do I do when it's slow? Slow times can come from weather, holidays, a, a slew of different things, but what do you do during that time? And so in this video or this podcast rather, and if you'd prefer to see the video version, you could help hop over to my YouTube channel and see it. I'm recording it both as audio and video, uh, but um, uh, lost my train of thought right there. So uh, anyway, I'll just go on with the video. This video or podcast is the four tips or four things you can do to get more business in your detailing business, or really this, these apply to across just business in general, but we'll apply them to detailing for the purposes of this podcast and this video. So the very first thing to do, and this is why I'm so happy to be working with House Call Pro, is you really need a centralized database of your client information. And the more information you have on your clients, the better. So we most, most of the times I at least have their number. Sometimes I don't even have their name, but I have their number. So their name, number, car, their address, uh, what kind of car they had the last time their car was detailed, what they got on that detail the last time it was, the more information you have on your client, the better. Their wife's number, their wife's name, their kids' names, their kids' numbers. And you, it's just, it's imperative that you have as much information on them as possible. Now, the reason why I team up with House Call Pro is because they make this centralized database extremely easy and efficient to access and then to store information, including pictures of their car, how much they paid for their last detail, the exact service, you have private notes, all, a, a ton of stuff. However, that is a paid option and there are other free options. I'll give you a couple. Your phone, you can just save them in your phone. Um, you can save them in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, you can save them in a Google Doc. You can save them on probably a free CRM that's out there. Uh, or you can jump up to a paid, ver or Square, Square is free. Uh, you just pay for the payment processing, but you can store all your customers in their database for free or you should be using something like QuickBooks for your accounting. You could store your customer information on there as well. All those things integrate with House Call Pro. The point is not to use House Call Pro. The point is to have a centralized database for your clients. And that is the, that is the first tip because it's the most important. That database, that pool of customers is how you make money. That is how you make future money. That is how you make your current money. From there, you could do everything. That's why I'm working behind the scenes on how to capture more information from you, the listener and the subscriber, and hopefully I'll have some more stuff uh, out in the future. But one thing I have is the detailer inner circle because then I capture information from you, where you're at in your journey for detailing, your credit card information, which is also obviously ideal. But more importantly, your email, your number, uh, all that so we can text you, we can call you, we can communicate with you off platform, right? And so the very first thing that you need to work on, whether you're in a slow time or not a slow time, and this is why I think the detailer inner circle is ideal for detailers that are just getting started because you don't really have a database. And one thing that I really sucked at when I first started detailing was not having that database in a centralized place that's easy to access. Evernote is another free one that you can use. Again, a lot of the free ones aren't super efficient, but they work, right? So. That's tip number one. Tip number two is to reach back out to clients that you haven't serviced in a long time. Now, if you are using a free database to store your, your client database information or your client's information, this is gonna be a lot more time consuming uh, than something like we offer in SMS conversations, a part of the detailer inner circle, where you can group your clients. And that's where a paid CRM really uh, pays for itself, essentially, is that you can group your clients into do different groups, meaning you can group a whole section of people that got their car detailed six months ago. So then you can send out a group text message to those people that got their car detailed six months ago and say, hey, 
it's time to get your car detailed again, or three months, or a year, or whatever. Again, not to kind of just put House Call Pro on a huge pedestal, but one thing that I have automated to help alleviate these slow times is that I have those automations in place to send out a thank you card a couple months later to remind, to remind them who I am, right? To stay in front of them. I also have an automated email sequence that goes out and I have an automated, automated text message sequence that goes out through SMS conversations. So the goal is to get a lot of these things automated so that they're constantly going in the background so that you never come to this time where you're slow. The idea is that you never have a slow time because if you do have a slow time, you're already late to the party. Now you're playing catch up. Now you're trying to book people same day. You're trying to get that cash flow going. You never want to be in a slow time. You want to do things during your busy time to help offset your slow time, which is again, why my number one is to have a customer database with as much information as possible. Now, if you don't have those two things, the third thing I want to talk about is running ads. Now, there's a big debate about SEO versus ads, SEO being search engine optimization, which essentially for free, quote unquote, which it's never free, you can rank higher for say auto detailing in Orange County, right? Whereas an ad, you pay money out of pocket to be at that top spot with certain key search terms, right? And everyone gets all up in arms and usually goes for the SEO because it's free, quote unquote, again, but it's not because SEO takes a ton of time and has no guarantee. So if you, if you work your, uh, what your worth is down to per hour and then you realize how many hours you have to put into SEO, you will actually see that SEO is a lot more expensive than just paying hundred bucks for an ad. If you're going to run ads, my favorite ad platform for detailers specifically is Google AdWords, which is why I had a course and all that. And Facebook ads could be extremely effective in running contests for detailers. And that's all I'm going to say on that because we have a ton of trainings on how to run effective contest contest Facebook ads inside the detailer inner circle, which you can check out at detailerinnercircle.com. Uh, however, my ad product of choice is Google ads for this reason. It seems like I turn on my Google ads, I optimize it with certain keywords. And within that same day, I can, I can schedule enough revenue to take care of the ad cost for the entire month. Usually within the first day, sometimes it takes a couple days, but very, very rarely. So when, whenever I'm in a drought or a dry season or a slow time, and I've gone through option one and two, uh, you know, kind of working my database, um, then I go to option three, which is running ads. And basically, yes, you're paying to get that top spot on Google so that people call you. It's as simple as that. It's a pay to play uh, option and it is extremely effective and efficient. And I wouldn't recommend unless you're in the detailer inner circle and you're going to run a contest under our direction, I would not suggest putting any money into Facebook. I would put that all into Google AdWords. Uh, like I said, with the caveat being you have someone like I have in the de detailer inner circle with Pete, who is a Facebook ad master. I would not Facebook. You can waste a lot of money. Google is very, very efficient and effective. So, there's that. So let's recap. Number one, have your database, have your pool of customers in a centralized database that's easy to access. And if you can get them grouped together so you can market differently to different groups of people, ideal. Number two is to actually start marketing to that pool of people. So you can send them cards in the mail. You can send them text messages. You can leave them voicemails by using something like slide dial. You can, um, stop by their house, you can stop by their office, all kinds of things. You can run specials to those people. It's very, very important to have that database. Number three is to run ads. And number four is to diversify. So if one, two, and three don't work, number four is a great option to diversify. So what does this look like as a mobile detailer working in Michigan in January? Well, you may be shoveling snow instead of washing cars right? You may be shoveling snow off cars. Now I'm a little outside of my depth dealing with any kind of weather considering I live in Southern California and I deal with 50 degrees being really cold and 
frost is usually the worst case of it. And then in case of frost, I just turn on my windshield wipers and it goes away. Anyway, it, diversifying your services during the slow times may be ideal. So you may be doing snow removal. You may be gearing up towards winter, offering windshield coatings. You may be gearing up into winter, offering just pressure washing of cars. You may have to dive deep into paintless dent repair, window tinning, rim repair, interior repairs. Maybe you only do interior detailing during the winter months. Maybe you have a shop that you need to fill, so you start offering car storage. Maybe you offer a service of changing out summer tires and winter tires for people at their home. And you tug along you know, the quick jacks or a jack stand or whatever. Uh, again, the, the, maybe you do oil changes. I don't know, like simple stuff. But if you're, and really how you diversify or what you diversify to comes down to one thing in my opinion, and it's how bad do you need the money? So what you're willing to do or not do, maybe you just forget detailing altogether and go into house painting interiors. Obviously, maybe that's not a good one or window washing um, during winter months if it's snowing outside, but there may be other ways to generate revenue. Maybe you hop on something like carguysupply.com and take advantage of their, their uh, affiliate program or you teach yourself how to optimize your website. Maybe that's the time that you dive deeper into SEO. Maybe that's the time that you, you dabble with learning how to run ads. Um, I think the overarching themes, I think during the slow times, a, a lot of the time we can just kind of be like, I'm slow, I don't know what to do, I have no clients, uh, I'm getting out of the detailing business, this is so dumb. I have seasons, which I'm guilty of doing. I did that all the time when I first got started. And then what you have to realize is during the slow times is when you plant the seeds for the times that you're busy. You work on your systems. You work on optimizing everything You because you have the time. During the summer months, you're busy detailing. You don't have time to organize your clients in one database. When it's winter and it's negative 40 outside, that's when you put all your, you go through your phone and work through your database. So I really wanted to do this podcast and this video and just talk about the four, just give four quick tips so I could reference this video if anyone ever asked or this podcast if anyone ever asked. Podcasting is really still my first love. I, I, videos are cool and I love it, but podcasting is still my first love. So anyway, not sure why I felt the need to say that right there. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you implement some of that. Um, let me know, send me an email or comment at the bottom of this video and let me know if you implement any of these, if any of them were new to you or if I just ranted on for 10 or 15 minutes about crap you already knew. How long did this go? Uh, 13. 13 minutes? Perfect, right where I wanted to be. So let me know, <laughs> let me know what you think in the comments below or on this podcast uh, page or whatever. Uh, but I really do truly hope that that helps you. It's helped me tremendously, those four things, and I hope to continue to bring value on the podcast and the video format um, as well. So you can follow me over on Instagram if you want to see some of my behind the scenes stuff. Um, I'm actually talking to a person, not just the camera like I used to do, uh, so that's fun. Uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you on the next one. See ya.